Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God is good how often? And all the time. Now, I don't know if some of y'all might have took some sleeping medicine this morning. I don't know what got you a little drowsy, a little hanging down this morning. But I don't know about y'all, but I'm sure enough glad to be in God's house here on this morning. After months and weeks of uncertainty and you don't know where you can't go out the house, you can't go to work, you can't go here, you can't go to God's house, uncertain and don't know what tomorrow is going to bring you. If you ain't got nothing else to thank God for this morning, you can thank God that he has watched over you. You can thank God that he has protected you. You can thank God dangers unseen and seen. You didn't know, but God was looking out for you. Who would have thought last year, this time, this year, we'd be going through such things that we are going through right now. We don't know how we have known we would have took the quickest decoy that we could have took to go around the problem. But I learned something about God, and that is that sometimes God allows us to go through storms in our life to show us just who he is. That he takes us through storms in our life to show us just what kind of God he really is. And he said it in his word, when you're going through a tough time in your life, all you got to do as a child of God is get down on your knees and learn how to call on my name and learn how to trust in me. And if you do that, I'll make a way for you. Ain't it been good to us, y'all? Ain't it been good? Amen. You are here this morning in God's house, able to open up your mouth and tell God thank you. You ain't nowhere in no hospital or no respirator. We're, we're wishing that you can get out, wishing that your health was better. God has been good to you. And if God been good, and everyone would tell them thank you. God is good. God is good. I'm so thankful to see all of you here on this morning. Some that I have not seen since I have been here. But hey, I'm home now. Hey, for those that hey, for, for those that I haven't seen yet. And I, I'm so glad to see. And I'm so glad that God has allowed, afforded us this opportunity to be in his house on this morning. Devil thought he was smart this morning. Go send an old storm through here. Or oh, I keep him at home this morning. I don't know about y'all, but I wouldn't let no devil keep me at my house. After God has been this good and after God has made a way for you, man, I don't care if you had to get out there and roll the boat. You might as well just get on out there and roll your way on over to 709 Wilson Boulevard because I got to hear a word from the Lord. Got to hear a word from the Lord. Anybody come to hear a word from the Lord this morning? I believe you came to the right place. Follow me to the, the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms. That's Old Testament. The book of Psalms. The 91st division. Yes. That's it. That's my grandma played the song. Yes. That's it. The grass withers and the flower thereof shall fade away. But the word of God shall stand forever. Amen. He that hath an ear let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. I had read verses 1 through 8, but if you would afford me the opportunity, I'd just like to read the whole thing, if that's all right. Psalm chapter 91. It's one thing for somebody to read it to you, but it's another thing for you to read it for yourself. So you, I'm not just saying something waiting on you to catch it. You didn't already caught it by yourself. You're just waiting on me to get there. Amen. Psalms, Psalm chapter 91, beginning at verse number 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall you trust. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come near your dwelling. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is your refuge, even the Most High, your habitation. There shall no evil befall you, neither shall any plague come nigh your dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. 
They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon, shalt thou trample under thy feet, because he hath set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, dear Lord, be acceptable in thy sight. Keep your distance, but just look over at somebody and say, you better find some shelter. They don't think the rain coming. Look at the other one and say, hey, you, you better find some shelter. Once you have gone through storms and peril and pestilence in life and destruction, you learn to appreciate what is being said here in the 91st Division of Psalms. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, Show me your secret. I, I would run right there if I knew where it was. What's the address? Which house do I run to? Where is it safe? Which person is safe? You are trying to find the physical place because you are reading this text with a carnal mind. The secret place is not a building. The secret place is not a house. It's not an address, but it's a place in the spirit that was just around the room as we were worshiping God just a few minutes ago. And, and I watched as some people come to church, but they never get to the secret place. You, you know how to move your body, but you ain't yet learned how to move your spirit. You, you, you know how to get on the highway and go to Daytona. You know how to get on the interstate and find your way to Orlando, but you don't know how to get in the spirit when it is available. And the secret place in the spirit of God, and because you look at worship through carnal eyes, you think it's all about emotionalism. And, and you say, well, I'm not an emotional person. Worship has nothing to do with your emotions, but it has everything to do with your spirit. It might affect your emotions, but it's not caused by your emotions. It is a deeper reality that you go into where the enemy cannot follow you, where storms cannot follow you, where your enemies cannot touch you in the secret place. Well, treachery can't get to you. Well, worry cannot follow you. Where depression cannot follow you. You can escape in the secret place. And it is in the secret only because you will not walk in the spirit. And when you start walking and living in the spirit, and start moving in the spirit, and start flowing in the spirit, you move into what we call the secret place. How many of y'all understand what I'm talking about right now? Do you, do you know that there are people that come to church, maybe even in this room, and, and they came to the building, but they missed the place? Where are you going? I'm going to the Sweetwater Church of Christ. That's great. That's as far as you got. But when you got there, other folk was already in the secret place. We were in the secret place, and you were at 7009. He is my refuge, my fortress, my God. And this is another element that brings you to the secret place. He says here, in him will I trust. If you're going to have a God and you're not going to trust him, why do you need him? Trust takes you to the secret place. Your trust will always be tried. Look at somebody and say, your trust is going to be tried. Satan has a conversation with God about a man named Job and says, I guess he's serving you. I guess he must be somewhat kind of dedicated to you. You got him in your secret place. 
You, you got a hedge around him. I can't touch him. He's in your secret place. I cannot access him. But I'll tell you what. If you move your hedge from around him, I'll make him curse you to your very own face. And every place God moved the hedge, Job had a trial. House burned down. Kids destroyed. Reputation assassinated, afflicted in his body, troubled in his mind about the lowest moment in his life. And when push came to show, Job said, the Lord knows the way that I take. And when he has tried me, I shall come forth as pure gold. I don't know anything. My, my children are dead. My cattle are dead. I'm bankrupt. I ain't got a pinty or a pinto. But when it came forth, I shall come forth as pure gold. Here the writer says, in him will I trust. As I said, trust will take you to the secret place. Now, now trust is not lip service. But I'm talking about down in your soul. Down in your spirit, in the innermost part of your being, you have to decide and ask yourself the question, do you really trust God? Do I trust God? It's easy to trust God when you just got a raise on your job. Come to church, ooh, praise the Lord. God been good to me. But can you trust him when you get fired? Can you trust him when you get laid off and they say we're going to lay you off but we can't pay you? Do you trust God even as they are lowering your loved one in the grave? Can you, can, you, can you really trust God? My heart is broken. I don't even think I can breathe right now. I'm so upset. I'm out of breath. But Lord, I trust that you wouldn't allow this to happen to me if not for some kind of way there was going to be something good and positive to just going to come out of this. I trust God even when I can't trace God. A lot of us only trust God when we can see what he is doing in our life. And if you don't see any tangible effects of God working in your life, God just not coming and just doing something amazing and extravagant in your life, then you won't praise him. You won't give him any kind of glory for anything that's done in your life. But children of God learn how to thank God for the little things that he's done in your life. The psalmist said, blessed be the God who loves us daily with Benefits. What kind of benefit? Food on your table. Benefits. Clothes on your back. Benefits. You're in your right mind. Benefits. You know where your children are. Benefits. It will take you to the secret place. So even if the enemy did do it, it didn't work because the enemy cannot overpower our God. And that is why when I see a storm arising, I run to the rock that I know that I can find some shelter in. And, 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 and isn't that just like God and just like us sometimes, and as we have seen over these past few months with the current pandemic and the crisis that we have going on right now, folk may act like they don't know who God is, but you let some trouble come in their life, you let some storms rise up, the very folk that did care them about God will be saying, Father, I come now, need been body bowed in for your presence, Lord. I need your help, Lord. I need you to make a way, Lord. I need you to provide. They know who to call on when they're going through trouble. Lord, I'm crying, but even in tears, you can still give God praise. Lord, I got sorrow in my life. Even in sorrow, you can still give God thanks and praise for what he has done in your life. The Bible says, Surely, not maybe, but surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowl. He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowl. Get that, get that. He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. He never said, I will stop the snare. He said, 
I'll get you out of it when you think you done got caught up. And how many of y'all can testify right now, man, I found myself in some thorny bushes a couple times in my life. I found myself stuck between a rock and a hard place. I found myself begging for God to alleviate the troubles and the worries and the pains in my life. And just as sure as I called on him, God made a way for me. Who would serve a God like this? A snare is a trap. A fowler is a trapper who specialized in setting up traps so that he could apprehend most often birds that were flying in the air. It is to bring you down from the height of your potential down to the reach of your enemy. It is to bring you down from the height of your potential. He sets a trap so he can bring you down to an area where he can reach you because as long as you are flying on the height of your potential, he can reach you. But what the devil does is he sets traps to bring you down into his domain so that he can get his hands on you. And every now and then, I don't care how high and mighty you might think you are, I don't care how strong you are, there is a trap, buddy, that'll bring you down. Oh, I said there's a trap that'll bring you down. And there you may, made to fly. And there you are, trapped in the snare of the fire. But God says, while you're trapped, don't be worried about how you're going to get out of the trap. Because I, the Lord, he says here in the Psalms, he says, I will deliver you from the stare of the fire. Meaning that the devil ain't doing nothing but wasting his time going out here and setting up traps Going out here and digging ditches trying to catch you. What they say, man, when you dig one ditch, you might as well dig two. Because the very one that was meant for somebody else, it just might be meant for you. The devil is not doing anything but wasting time going out and setting up traps. Because before the trap ever comes, before I ever arrive at the trap, I already have assurance. The scripture has let me know that I shall be delivered. So what I'm going to be wearing, oh, I'm in a snare. Oh, I got caught up. Lord, what am I going to do? You better learn how to know who your God is and learn how to trust in the promises of the word of God. I'll take God's word over anything. I'll take God's word over the word of the physician. I'll take God's word over the word of an attorney, over any person that considers to be of any intellect and thought because his thoughts are above our thoughts. His ways are above our way. He is simply awesome. He said, he says, he says, I will deliver you. It may be a trap of sickness, but God said, guess what? Even in a trap of sickness, I'll deliver you. Oh man, it don't take but one of us. Everybody here got a testimony. I was sick, Ooh, but thank God, now I'm well. I, I was broken, I was hurting, but God eased the wounds and the pains that I had going on in my life. God said, he said that he shall deliver me out of the snare of the fire. Now, in order to deliver me out of it, I got to first of all be in it. You can't deliver me out of something that I haven't first of all got in. Don't judge me where you met me because I'm coming out of that. I'll say that again for somebody that's watching on the live screen. Don't judge me because of where you met me because I'm coming out of that. Where you saw me the last time is not where you're going to see me the next time. Because now that I have been through that thing, I got some history with God. Oh, the devil has messed up now. He'll allow us to come through COVID-19. He'll allow us to come through all of this sickness and despair. And now he'll let us learn how to depend on God just a little bit more. How to trust in God just a little bit more. Say that you should have got me when you had the chance. Because now I know that God is able. Don't lock me up to what
what I did because I'm not who I used to be. Anybody ever had this moment, Lord, help me. I'm falling and I can't get up. You ever, you ever been there? You, you ever felt like that? Lord, help me. That's a cry of desperation. That's a cry for some immediate assistance. Y'all, y'all seen the commercials, the life, life, life alert buttons? You know, only time you're going to press that is when, hey, amen, I'm in trouble. I don't know, a hip might have slipped or something happened, like something going on right now. I need somebody to come and help me. Hey, Sarah, man, I ain't got time to wait. I need somebody to come and help me. I am falling. And I can't get up. Oh, man, let me tell you, it will be at the most inopportune time. You just come off a mountaintop experience. I've experienced the glory of God. I've had an awesome time, man. And while I was up there, I actually got to talk to Moses and Elijah and all them while we was up there on the mountain. But now that I come off of my mountaintop experience, I got to deal with the devil down at the bottom of the mountain. Church, you might as well get it out of your mind, thinking that all of your life you're going to be living on the mountaintop. You might as well get it out of your mind that all of your life is just going to be peaches and roses and everything is going to be fine and you're never going to have any trouble. You're never going to fall into anything. And that's why a lot of people don't really learn how to trust in God is because they think they're not supposed to go through anything because you're a child of God. May all the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord shall deliver them out of them all. all Press the medical alert burden because God can get you out of it. God, he said, he says, surely, not maybe, not hopefully, but he says, surely, he shall deliver me out of the snare of the fowler and the noisome, and the noisome pestilence. A pestilence is a contagious, infectious, epidemic style disease. He shall deliver me from the noisome pestilence. He shall deliver me from what infected me. The plague comes from who I got close to. And because I got close to you, I walked away from your disease. But it was yours and not mine. So I'm not going to own it. That went over half your hands. But I'm going to give it back to you. Because he is going to deliver me out of the hands of the noisome pestilence. This is why I think, and, 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 we, and you don't have to, there is no absolute. But, but think this is why I think Moses wrote this because nobody would know like Moses what plagues look like. Because he saw the plague that hit over there in Egypt. He heard the writing. The screaming cries of men covered with balls and infectious diseases. He saw the frogs coming out in massive proportions and afflict all of Egypt. He watched them right in pain and disease and affliction and he watched the frogs hop all the way up to the Hebrews' houses. He watched the death angel fly all the way over and take every firstborn son. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. He knows firsthand the CC. We've been afforded the opportunity to become acquainted with the plague now in our life. We remember, you remember the bird flu, the pig flu, swine flu, and all of that. But we haven't seen plagues like what we got going on right now. Bodies falling on our right side, falling on our left side. Moses had seen this, but it didn't come nigh him. Is there anybody in here who has walked through some plagues and some diseases, some afflictions in your own life? And by all rights, man, we ain't no better than anybody that has succumbed to the COVID-19 virus. I'm going to just make that disclaimer right now. None of us in here are no better than any person that has lost their life to the coronavirus, to the COVID-19. But we can simply thank God for his grace and we can thank God for his mercy that what took somebody else out, it did not come nigh my dwelling. He says, this, so he says, now all of us, now whether you realize it or not, if before COVID you didn't have a testimony, you got a testimony now. 
And before you can tell nobody about the goodness of Jesus, guess what? You can tell somebody about the goodness of Jesus right now because you know for yourself, as we read, that he'll cover you like a hen. I don't know if y'all ever seen that. You ever, you, if y'all seen that, see, I grew up around chickens and ducks and geese and hogs and dogs and rams, chickens, you name it. I, I, grew up, I grew up around all that. Now, when the rain comes, just say the hens and they, 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 they bitties and they ain't got no shelter. Ain't, no, ain't nothing for them to run under. You'll see that mother spread out her wings. That's right. Yes, sir. And she don't have to say that to the baby. She, they already know when mama covers them, they run under mama for shelter. Yeah. They run under mama because they know once we get in a secret place, they already know once we get in this place with her, we are going to be sheltered from the outside forces and from the outside problems that we would normally have to face had it not been for the shelter. I don't know whether you recognize it or not, but even right now, the Lord got his wings spread over your life. The Lord got his wings spread over your life. Oh, it's so good, man. Not, none, of us la- none of us last night went to sleep and didn't wake up this morning. The Lord had his wings over you. Nobody, nobody, I know you might have got out of bed this morning and thought somebody was eating Rice Krispies down in the, in the kitchen because all you heard was snap, crackle, and pop. I know you got issues, you got ailments, you got pain going on in your body. You got all of that, but yet and still, you was able to put one foot in front of the other and come into God's house on this morning and open up your mouth that you had already made up the decision when you got up this morning, if nobody else decides to give God thanks for what he's done, I do it because I know what God has done in my life. I don't know about y'all, but I don't have to come to church to thank God. I don't have to be in the house of God in order to open my mouth and thank God. But I like what David said. David said that I will bless the Lord on Sundays, on Wednesday nights. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. And when we think about circumstances that we have all put ourselves through in life, can I be real with you for a moment? Can can we just have a real, real moment? Some know years ago, had it not been for the shelter of God, you probably would have owed these. Some of us know, had it not been for the shelter of God, you'd be doing third of the life right now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, had it not been for the shelter of God, the car wreck could have been fake. You know, had it not been for the shelter of God, when you was about to go through those double doors to go back for your operation, for your procedure, you already know there was a chance maybe I can come out or maybe I'm going to leave in there. You already know, had it not been for the shelter and for the protection of God, things could have went a totally different way. So if you have experienced the protecting, loving power of God by his sheltering through past experiences in your life. What you worry about now? What you fearing now? What got you antsy and so, so agitated right now when you already know what he has the power to do? You already know that he specializes in things that we think are impossible. He specializes in those things that we think cannot happen. God says, you know what, man? You said that doubt me. I, I, like, I like James said this way. James said that if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who give it to all men liberally and upbraid it not, but let him ask in faith. Nothing wavering. Now, now, see, God and faith go hand in hand. You can't say that you are of God and you don't have faith. What is faith? Faith is the substance of things that we hope for 
and it is the evidence of things that we cannot see. Meaning that even if I don't see any evidence of things getting any better, even if I don't see any evidence of God doing anything in my life because of who he is and because of what he has already done, I ain't got no better sense than to believe that sooner or later God is going to use this opportunity, he's going to use this situation because all things, not just the good things, not just the things that make you feel good, but all things work together. For the good of them that love the Lord. And because I love him, and, 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 and because I love him doesn't mean that I'm always faithful to him. Amen, lights. Because I love him, and because I have devoted myself to him, does not mean that some days I have to look in the mirror and see if I'm that same Christian that I claimed to be the day before. Because if we be real with ourselves every day of our life in some way or another we put another nail in his hand. Come on now. We pierce him right back in the side. Has our Savior not suffered enough pain? Has he not endured enough affliction? Then for me to be going through a storm in my life. And I ask God for shelter. I ask God for protection. God provides the protection, but I run right back out there in the rain. He brought me a shelter, given it to me, plain as day. He has provided it for me. But it's too dry on the death. <laughs> And that's just like us sometimes, man. We cry, Lord, it's wet, I'm getting soaked. Now it's too dry. When and what can God do in your life to bring you to a place of content? When and what can God do in your life? See, uh, uh, some people have had to learn those these, these past few months, these past few weeks. Because, man, they ain't nothing like Having your, your life's means cut off. Now you're worrying. Racing, man, how am I going to do this? How am I going to get that? How am I going to get this done? How am I going to get done? But trusting in God, it'll pay off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, not, you know, some folks say it'll pay off after a while. You know, I, I get my payoff after a while, but it's going to pay off in the right now as well. Yeah. Trusting in God is what has brought us through the storms of life that we have experienced thus far. This year alone has been full of storms. Every day we wake up, it seems like it's just a storm that has come around. But on Christ, the solid rock is whom I stand. He is a sure foundation. His word is a sure foundation. And let me tell y'all, when the storms of life are raging, you better learn how to stand on God's word. Yes. When the winds of life, billows began to roll yes. and they began to blow, there's the same old sign say, you better make sure that your anchor grips the solid rock. Yes. Because if it doesn't, you'll surely just drift on. Yes. I ain't trying to drift away with everybody else. I'm trying to make sure that I got something that's going to hold me when I'm going through storms in my life. That's why I know, so I, I know y'all are people of faith this morning. I know you're people of faith. How do you know I'm people of faith? Because, man, you just could have said, man, I just, I just pressed my hair. And I already know when I go outside, it's going to frizz up. And, I, man, this is my first Sunday back in the church. I ain't trying to have folks looking at me like, oh, now she ain't combed her hair since she's been out of church. I ain't trying to have, I ain't trying to go through that. I ain't trying to have nobody talk. You could have used an excuse. You could have used an excuse to stay at the house. But you press your way to the house of God. You press your way. You persevere. You came on out in spite of everything, in spite of everything that's going on in our life right now. You say, you know what, man? God been good to me. He's delivered me. He's made a way for me. So because he has, you know what, man? I'm going to get up 
and I'm going to God's house. I may not be able to sing like a reaper. I may not be able to preach like Paul. But you know what? I can offer God the little bit that I do have. And you know what? You may not like it, but it'll come up before him as a sweet smelling seed. God will be pleased with that. He'll be pleased with it. You better find some shelter. The storm is, the storm is already here, y'all. Well, they say if you're not presently going through a storm, just came out of a storm, keep on waking up, there's a storm on the horizon somewhere. So, man, since you know storms are arising, since you know that you will at some point go through a storm, why not abide in the shadow of the Almighty? Why not find comfort in the shelter of his wounds? Be not afraid of snares such as COVID-19. Be not afraid of snares such as systematic racialism and injustice that we face in the world. Be not afraid of all of that stuff because just as the power sets up the snare, God saw the power and he saw the snare before he ever set it up. And he will, as he has promised us in the world, he will deliver us from all of that. Aren't you glad for that this morning? Amen. Aren't you glad to know that when I find myself between a rock and a hard place, I have a deliverer. Somebody bring me out, bring me over, and pull me through the storms of this life. My brother and my sister, you need to seek shelter. You need to seek shelter because the devil ain't playing with you. I have to say, when the devil has gone out, not as a, 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 a little feline, but he's going out as a roaring lion. He's not meowing, he's roaring. Seeking those that he may devour. And you are the ones that have made the declaration that you're going to follow Jesus. You made the declaration that, hey, I'm on the Lord's side, I'm going with Jesus all the way. And because you have made that declaration, you're on his map. And he will be setting up snares and traps to get us, but we have to live. And my brother and my sister, if you're here on this morning, and you find yourself, even right now, going through a storm in your life, I know where you can find some shelter. Even if you find yourself right now, because of the current crisis, the current climate that we're living in, you, you, you just batter down with emotions. You batter down with worries and cares that are going on right now. Can I, can I tell you something like we sang the song? Take your burden. And don't bring them back. Now, so I know some of y'all put leave hidden cameras at the throne of God. And, and, and because you got a hidden camera, man, you, every other day you're checking it. Has he done the thing with it yet? Has he taken care of my troubles? Take, take, man, that word was still there. I, I might well go and pick it back up. Take it. Birds to the Lord and leave it there. My brother, my sister, if you're here today and you don't yet know the Lord in the pardon of your sin, you have not yet had your sins washed away by the blood of the Lamb, if you have not yet put on Christ in baptism, if you have not yet been added to the body of Christ, which is the church of Christ, you have that opportunity today. Why put off today for what you plan? on doing tomorrow. Sufficient for today. We're so worried about tomorrow and we fail to take care of the issues and the problems that we have going on today. Because you know what? The only thing that you really know about is right now. The only thing that you really can affect is what's going on right now. You don't know what tomorrow going to bring. You know what? We don't know what this is. But because we don't know, and we know somebody that does know, Amen. it pays us to trust him. Put your trust in him. And if you need to come to Christ this morning, come here in his word. Romans chapter 10 and verse number 17 says, So then faith, come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Upon hearing his word, you believe the same. He said, except you believe that I am he, you shall die 
in your sins. Upon belief, one is to repent of their sin. What is repentance? Repentance is a change within the mind of a person that shows up in the actions of the individual in the life that they live. After repentance with the mouth, you confess him as your Lord and your Savior, your Master and your Redeemer. And after confession, you are willing to be baptized with him in the water, water the grave of baptism. Have your sins washed away, done away with, never to rise up against you in this life, neither the life that is to come. And according to Acts chapter 2 and verse number 47, praising God and having faith with all the people. And the Lord himself added to the church daily, such as should be saved. It is not by accident that you are here this morning. You did the wind and just blow you here. A strong wind didn't blow you here this morning. God meant for you to be here this morning. And if you are subject to the invitation, don't let it pass you by. This may very well be the last chance that God affords you to get yourself in line with him. So now that God has brought you through storms and you pray, God, bring me out of this, 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 this pandemic, bring me out of these troubles. And now that God is leading us to a better place, we ain't over the hill just yet, but now that God is leading us to a better place, the same way you trusted him and called on him while you was going through it, you can trust in him now to keep you and sustain you through what we are experiencing. And my brother, my sister, if you're subject to the invitation, I beg and I plead with you, come to Jesus. You can come now as together we stand and sing the song of invitation.